Does the idea of launching your online course give you cold sweats? Does it make you wanna hide under the covers? You're not alone. We see thousands of digital product launches every year and every creator we speak to feels the same way. I'm Aaron from Thinkific, the best tool for starting and growing your online education business. In the next few minutes, I'm gonna guide you through a successful launch strategy. Plus, I'm gonna show you how to pull it all off in Thinkific. If you'd like more details on outlining, pricing, creating your course content, check out our other videos in the How to Create and Sell Your Online Courses This Year playlist. All right, let's get into it. First things first, launching isn't just about hitting the publish button. Forget the myth of build it and they will come. I'm sorry, Kevin Costner, that's a silver screen fantasy. Launching is about strategically leveraging all the work you've done over the past years on building brand awareness and your audience and then turning that into sales. To do it, let's start with the most important aspect of your launch, your audience. Not everyone in your audience will reach for their wallets. Picture a vast sea of faces. Among them, there's a special group waiting, eager for your offer. So who are these special few? What problems are top of mind for them? And why, at this very moment, should this course be their number one priority? If these questions leave you scratching your head, it's time to play detective. Dive into the comments of your most engaging posts, head into community spaces discussing your topic, and take time to sit down and talk with a few people. It will help immensely when it comes time to writing your launch messaging. Once you have a handle on that, it's time to think about creating a launch calendar. A launch calendar outlines what you'll do and when you'll do it during your launch. Most launches have three phases to them. The first phase is called the nurture phase. This phase is about two to four weeks usually, and it happens before the launch, and it's all about relationship building. You're not selling anything yet. Instead, you want to get the people who listen to you to start thinking about what issues or opportunities your course will address. The next phase is called the sales phase. Typically, this phase lasts one or two weeks and begins with the cart open. The cart open is the window of opportunity for customers to get any time-limited bonuses or discounts with their purchase of the course. By time-boxing the opportunity, you're making listening to your pitches a priority for your audience. People are busy and they need a reason to listen to your sales pitch. Next, we'll enter the countdown phase. This is typically about two or three days before the end of your launch and lasts until the cart closes. During this phase, you'll need to ramp up the urgency. It's quite normal to see 75% or more of your purchases come through at this time. Like I said, people are busy and they like to put off big decisions, so it's your job to remind your audience of any time-limited aspects to your launch, like disappearing discounts, bonuses, or seat limits. You're going to need to be present during this phase to hop on calls or answer questions via email from prospective buyers. Once the card is closed, it's a good practice to leave yourself a week or two before you start any live aspects of the course to give people who missed the deadline and reach out to you a final chance to buy. Once you have a good idea of when your launch will happen, it's time to build out all the messaging for it. Step three is to craft your compelling copy. For the nurture phase, you'll want to create and post really engaging content for your audience that touches on the why and the what behind your course. If your course is the how to do something, talk about why that thing is really important to do and what it might entail from a very high level. You can do this with a free webinar, free content, or even a free mini course. For example, John Lee Dumas, the host of Entrepreneur on Fire, the podcast had a course that helped people create their business. He knew that the course wouldn't be helpful to people if they didn't have a good business idea, so he made a free mini course called Your Big Idea, which quickly solved this for the audience. Using this three-part mini course, they were able to get thousands of people ready to buy their larger program, Real Revenue, during its launch. For the sales phase, you'll want to base everything you communicate around your sales pitch. Storytelling is a really powerful way to engage your audience with your pitch. By explaining your story or a story of a customer you've already helped, you can clearly communicate the value of working with you in a way that people will actually care about listening to. You'll also need a sales page. We cover how to write a great sales page for your online course in another video that I'll link below. 
Messaging becomes simpler during the countdown phase. You'll just want to increase the amount of messages that you send to prospects and keep it simple and focused on any deadlines that you might have introduced. Additionally, you could address common objections, FAQs, or you can share more testimonials or customer stories. After step three, all that's left to do is to hit send and watch the money roll in. After your launch, step four is to review the results. After your launch, gather data and review any feedback that you receive from customers or prospects. Use the start, stop, keep retrospective method to refine your approach for the next launch. Just remember every launch, even a failed launch, is a learning opportunity to do better next time. Now that we've covered the strategy, let's dive into the Thinkific tutorial. If you don't have a Thinkific account yet, you can get started for free by clicking the link below or by going to thinkific.com. All right, for this tutorial, we'll assume that you've got your course ready to launch by creating it, adding your content, setting up Thinkific payments, pricing your course, and creating your sales page. If you haven't ticked all of those boxes, that's okay. Just go check out our other videos in this series for step-by-step -step instructions. At this point, there is not much to do with your course to get it into the hands of your student. We recommend previewing the course as a student to double check that your lessons are the way that you want them before publishing. To do this, edit the course you want to launch and click on the preview button. Choose preview as a student and then go through your course as a student would, testing your content, quizzes, and other aspects of the course. We have a full guide to testing your course before launch, which I'll also link below. If you're happy with your course, head over to the publishing tab. If you have any issues with your course, like lesson still in draft mode, you'll see the warning here. From there, select publish and save. Hooray, you've just published your course. Just to be clear, publishing won't make any announcements for you, like sending emails or anything like that. This just makes it possible for you to start linking customers to the sales page and then for them to buy the course. And to do that, you can find the link to your sales page under the settings tab here. Or if you're not using a Thinkific sales page, you could link directly to the checkout for your course by going to the pricing tab and clicking the copy URL button here. Now, there are some customization options you could check out before publishing. For example, you can set a few lessons to be a part of a free preview for your course, and that means when customers come to your sales page, they'll see a button to explore the free preview. From there, they'll make a student account, giving you their email address in the process. Then they'll get limited access to your course to see what it feels like. After they're done with the free content, they'll be redirected back to the checkout to buy the whole course. If they don't purchase, you have their email address and you can follow up with them as a hot lead. And speaking of email, you can set up some automated email notifications like course welcome emails, course completion emails, and automated reminders to have the student complete the course. This can help your customers stay engaged and boost completion rates. There's so much more that we could get into, but I don't wanna overwhelm you with all of the options for customization in Thinkific just yet. I want you to just focus on getting your course published and ready to share so that you can break out the champagne after a successful course launch. All right, so you've got the strategy, the steps, and the right tools. Now all you need is to take action. Remember, every successful course creator was once a beginner. Perfect is the enemy of done, and your first launch will teach you enough to make the second and third even better. If this video helped you, give it a thumbs up. And for more tips on online courses, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. And until next time, happy launching.